Well, the last solar pool heater was doing quite well, uh, but I decided from all the comments to make another solar pool heater based on all those comments. So things like sprayed black, inside a frame, a glass sealed unit, and also copper tubing. And it all worked out quite well, apart from, well, the UK weather. But apart from waiting for the sun to turn up, I'll show you how it's made. While you're here, why not check out some of the other projects that I'm doing, such as this milling machine running in the background. It's just running a test at the moment, but all of this will be running on solar energy at a later date. And it's all part of the MGF project. Hope you enjoy the video. Well, this bulb may be a little big, so it needs cutting down to the size of the glass. Although the glass does need a little bit of a clean. The sealed unit will trap most of the heat in, so there's no chance of the wind cooling the pipes down. So that should be the right size. Just need to cut this down to the same size. The idea with the aluminium is so that once sprayed black, it will trap more of the sun's energy in between the pipes. And with tape that I'll put on it later on, this should transfer some of the heat back into the pipe. So actually increasing the surface area. And this bit of aluminium is about 0.8 mil thick. So it's nice and easy to cut with a jigsaw. Although make sure you deburr the edges. I'm going to use two lots of this thermal backing just to make sure that no heat escapes out the back of the panel. And as you can see, it's quite easy to cut. The frame I'll make round it will be more than adequate to take a number of layers. This is the copper tubing that I'm going to be using and I'm going to be spraying all of this black. So once this is stuck down, the whole thing's going to be sprayed black. And I'm using three lots of this, so 25 meters each. So there's going to be 75 meters just under, it depends how much I cut off, within this panel. I'll put the link in the description below for this tubing. As you can see, it's quite easy to manipulate with your hands, although it can be very fiddly. So just to add to the complication, I'll introduce the second one. So it'll be easier to put them all on at the same time, even though it looks a complete mess at the moment. Just because that isn't difficult enough, I'll add the third one. This took a good couple of hours to lay out on the board, and with the magic of video, I'll speed it up. So this copper tubing is very thin walled, has a small internal diameter, which means it's got a lot of surface area. So the more surface area, the faster the water will heat up in this system, which means it will have more heating capacity from the sun, because you want that heat energy in the pool rather than in the panel. So I just put some masking tape on the top of it because I'm going to take it off the aluminium plate initially and that's so I can put some thermal tape on the back. This thermal tape is what you use for LED strips so it transfers the heat to the aluminium. So I thought this would be ideal for transferring the heat from the aluminium plate through to the copper piping and sticking the aluminium plate back on. Then once it was all stuck down, sprayed the whole lot with Plasticoat matte black paint. I chose this type of paint because matte black will actually absorb more of the sun's energy than gloss paint. Also to keep the pipes in place, I'm using some cable ties. I think 
The orange ones sets it off quite nicely against the black. It's easy enough to cut the copper tube in, just with a pipe cutter, and you can buy these quite cheap online. And then it was on to making a frame, where I used the base of the panel just to measure it all out, and keep it square. There's a little bit more involved than last year's panel, but I think the results are going to be worth it. I designed it so all the pipes could actually come out of the panel, so there was no connections inside. That means if there's any leaks, the leaks would be on the outside. Also, I could reconfigure the way the pipes are connected. The whole idea of this end piece is that I can slide the whole thing out and leave the glass in place. So if I do need to get in there for whatever reason, I just cut the seal around the glass at the front and just slide it all out. But hopefully I won't need to. Then it was just a case of routing it all out so the glass would fit inside. Oops, now I can't get the glass out. Then turn the frame over and make some braces. To ensure the frame was square, I just used the same panel again, sitting on top of a couple of pieces of wood.
I had to drill 10.5 mil holes into the wood just so that the adapters could sit in there without shifting out. And these were quite a tight fit and have to be hammered in. So this is just testing how solid they are when they're in the wood. Then it's a case of feeding everything through, measuring the depth of the adapter Marking on the copper pipe, then transferring that measurement to the copper pipe. So the outer measurement is the one I'll cut to make sure the adapters fit flush in the wood. So the end of the reels were fairly squashed and I didn't allow enough overhang. But that didn't turn out to be an issue, as I just opened it up with a screwdriver and a couple of drill bits. And then clean up the copper so the solder flows correctly over the pipe. So once they're all on there, just a case of soldering them on. Then hammering them into the wood. It worked out quite well to be fair. Top tip, when you're drilling, use the edge of a set square to get your drill bit at 90 degrees to the plane that you're drilling into. And then standard hose pipe fits quite nicely over the top, just with a Jubilee clip to ensure it doesn't fall off. The other benefit to doing this is that you can configure the pipes in any way. So you can have all three in parallel with the water flying through very quickly, or you can configure it so that you've got it in series. So you can feed one into another pipe and then through the, all the pipes in series until it comes out the end pipe. But my guess is initially, it would be better to put it all in parallel. So to increase the flow and get all that heat energy transferred from the panel straight to the pool. This is just connected to a normal mains tap, and as you can see, the flow is not restricted at all when running through the pipes in parallel. Then it's coating with a bit of saddling to seal up the wood. Although the, the frame is made of external decking that I used to make the garden table with. But the ply board, although marine ply, will need a coat, otherwise it will go rotten if left out. These wooden rods underneath the panel not only help me move it backwards and forwards, but also when I turn it over to paint the other side, I won't get any paint on the desk. Well, apart from that drip,
Then once the sealed unit's in place, it's just a case of sealing it all in with some external silicon. Although we haven't had a lot of sun in the summer this year, I was able to test it a couple of times and found that the average output from this panel on a good day was around 500 watts. So it's actually working very efficiently considering the size difference between last year's panel and this one. And hopefully it looks a bit more professional too. I decided later on, although I haven't painted it, to put some legs on it and make it into a table. Oh, and some wheels too, so it was easy to move around. Also, the plastic cover on it is just to stop the glass being damaged. I hope you've enjoyed the video and it inspires you on your own projects. And I hope to see you in the next video or at the Makers Central event at the Birmingham NEC next year. I'll leave the link in the description.